The Gospel reading today is John 21, 1 through 19. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because they were, there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon and Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. I remember a few years back, when Pastor Larry gave an exceptionally poignant sermon regarding this very gospel. It touched me, and it made me reevaluate re how I thought of myself as a Christian. The part that touched me most was the time he had spent on Jesus' question to Simon Peter. His simple statement of feed my sheep made me realize I was not doing as Jesus had asked. I went home that Sunday. And I thought long and hard, the most I had ever thought about any one sermon. I made a commitment at that time, along with my wife, Paula, to begin to work closer with what I knew was right in my heart. That was one day that changed me as a Christian. The weeks leading into this particular Sunday had been an especially moving Easter for me. I felt guilt like I had never felt before. Sorrow for my past actions that moved me to tears and a real sense of enlightenment as to exactly what Jesus Christ was. It is easy to come to church. This is important. However, there is truly a different commitment to following Jesus. The fact that we believe and worship in our way is our way of saying we love him. This he knows. It is how we answer the question 
that really shows how dedicated we are to listen. Now imagine being on that lake and seeing a man who is telling you to throw your net on the other side of the boat. Why would you listen to him? What does he know? Just some guy on the shore telling you what to do. The disciples didn't know who it was. They were not aware of who he was. But they knew in their hearts it was the right thing to do. And it paid off in huge dividends. That is when they knew it was Christ. There's a magical difference between believing and following. When we believe, we cast that net and we fish all night long and we catch nothing. When we follow, the net becomes full. We get an enormous satisfaction doing what we did. When the disciples followed, they got what they were looking for. The same applies for you. Jesus Christ will provide for you if you are following in the right direction. Simon Peter was asked if he loved Jesus. His answer was simple and quick. Of course. Jesus is asking you the same question all the time. Do you love him? He is she. As we go through life, we are confronted with simple, innocuous situations that put this love to the test. Everything that we do and see is a simple question proposed by Jesus. Do you love me? You see a small child who has fallen off a bike, and you make sure they are okay. You answered the question, tend to his sheep. An acquaintance of yours is down on their luck and struggling to feed their family. While at the store shopping for your very own dinner, you buy an extra bag of groceries and you deliver it to their doorstep. You have answered the question, feed my sheep. You hear a friend mention <clears throat> in an ethnic group in a far off state that suffers from a high illiteracy amongst their children and have a difficult financial situation that will not help correct it. You muster your contacts. You gather some books and you take a trip to read to and build a library of material. You have answered the question, feed my lambs. It's our actions that define our true love of Jesus Christ. However minor they may seem, they will have a great effect on someone. Perhaps that someone is you. I know firsthand the power of a simple gesture. A kind word given regarding my wife's health. A dinner delivered to my doorstep by a friend, not because they were asked, but because they wanted to. These have all combined to show me that the true path to happiness is through Jesus Christ. The questions he posed to Simon Peter are being posed to all of us. Do you love me? Then followed by a simple statement. Follow me. Now when I wrote this message, I spent a week thinking it up. I wrote four pages of notes and I put it together in a simple message. And all through the night last night, I was questioning, am I delivering the right message? Is this the word I want to give to you? I woke up this morning, and as most everybody in the world does nowadays, I hopped on Facebook, which I actually rarely do, but something told me this morning to do it. And lo and behold, right there on this wonderful social networking site was a message from God given to me through someone we're all very familiar with, Brian Sergio, had posted a simple video that to him meant something, but to me solidified the message that I was giving you today. So I've decided to take a slight break in this message and allow you to watch that video. And hopefully it'll help you understand exactly the words I've read to you today. So Derek, if you don't mind, if you could start the video, please. <coughs>
Yeah, wow. <laughs> that is quite a message, isn't it? And the, the thing that really amazed me, if you really paint a close, close attention to the video, and obviously this is the second time I've watched it, the three girls at the very beginning of the movie that were skating with the, the original boy, they were there. They were, they were the lambs. They were the ones that were, they, they may not have completely understood Jesus Christ, but they were followed. They were around the people, each and every one of them. And then the ancillary effects they had, the hot dog cart man, the flower girl, you know, they saw the beauty of, of, of the kindness that these people had, and it, it affected them, and they, they gave back in their own way. So, you know, again, back to the original message, it's our actions that are most important. Everything we do and say is our way of following the teachings of Christ. It is not a matter of judging someone for their actions, but to learn if what we have done is the correct path to follow Jesus. Imagine if you had walked by that child that fell from the bike. They're not crying. I have an important place to be, and I can't waste my time on this. They will be okay. Or your friend who is struggling to feed their family. I can afford it, but I have so much to do. I have to get back home because before my favorite show starts. They will find a way to provide for themselves. What about the children who have difficulty reading? I know someone will help them. Maybe some government agency will step in and provide for what they need. I really need a vacation to a warm tropical place, not a frozen wasteland of a state far away. To truly understand the difference in what our decisions can make, we have to follow Jesus to understand. But how do I make the decision to help? When do I know if the right decision has been made? Follow Jesus. Answer the question, and you do not need to ask.